Hey, ladies and gents, welcome to TFI, and I'm just trawling through my YouTube comments, and I've just spotted a comment come through from Tom, who said, ah, what I'm confused about is all this whole project geometry business, I've no clue when I'm supposed to use it, and there's nothing that tells me what it's supposed to be doing, and then he's went on to say uh, he's going to go off to find a rich single lady and leave all this techie stuff behind. Well, Tom... Well, Tom, as it goes, there happens to be a rich lady out there with a few troubles at the moment who's in need of a nice stiff one. A, a drink. I mean, a, a stiff, stiff drink. <laughs> But in the event that you're unable to get in touch with Kendall, let's take a look at Project Geometry. <laughs> right, it seems like a pretty good topic, actually. That's uh, something I've not covered yet. Project Geometry, what is it and what's it all about? It's pretty essential. It really is pretty essential. And once you understand what it does, it's kind of one of those things where you think, I'm not sure how I could actually do anything without doing this. So I'm going to start with, uh, well, I mean, I literally just saw the comment 10 minutes ago, so I haven't got anything prepared. But let's start with modeling up a slot of some description, right? Let's go 30 that way, and then let's say four that way, and we'll we'll constrain it in place, we'll drop it onto the center point there, so it goes purple, and then we'll extrude this. We'll extrude it, say, by 50-ish, sort of in that, in that direction, right? Okay, project geometry. The whole point of project geometry is to give yourself something to snap onto when you draw new stuff, and to allow you to align new features to existing ones. For example, say this is, uh, say you want to create an extension of this profile about 20 mil further from this way. So what you would do is you would sketch on that face and you need to be able to, to, to recreate that shape. What you're not going to do, what would not make sense is if you needed to then redraw the slot. So you have to draw, you know, another 30 and then another four and then done on this and then drop that onto there, and then you've now redrawn the profile, and then extrude that. That would not make any sense at all. So that's where Project Geometry comes in handy. Project Geometry allows you to just reuse an existing profile in the background, the profile being this shape as constructed by the edges of the solid. So what you would do is you would just select Project Geometry. And I understand it does, it, it is a bit of a strange term, Project Geometry. In fact, some might read it as Project Geometry which, uh, if you don't know what it does, you might read it as Project Geometry. It's not the best of terms. They could have probably called it something different, but you're projecting the geometry from data in the background onto the sketch that you're currently working on. That's the whole point of it. So you'd go Project Geometry, and there's two ways, well, there's quite a few ways of projecting geometry, but the two main ways are you would pick edges. So you can say, I want to project the edge of this solid onto my sketch, or you can pick the entire face, and that will depend on where your cursor is and what it's lying on. So if you hover over the face, you can see all the edges of the face are highlighted, or you can pick individual edges. So if you pick individual edges, you can click that one, and you can see this yellow arc here, that is projected geometry. It's the projected edge of the solid. Think of it as burning the edge onto your sketch. And then we can pick this edge here, and then this one here, and then this one here. And that's allowed us to form an entire profile without actually having to draw anything. But the beauty of projected geometry is that it's linked, and this is really important, this is probably the most important part of projecting geometry, is the geometry you project is linked to the original feature. So let's go back to sketch one, this one here, which is the very first thing that I drew. We can edit that dimension. Let's say, what the hell's going on with that dialog box? Anyway, let's change that to 40. Right, we'll change that to 40 and we'll increase the size to 5, finish the sketch, watch what happens to the projected geometry, see, it's linked because it's burnt onto the sketch and linked back to the original faces so it will adapt and change to whatever it is you've projected from. The bonus of that then being is we can now do an extrusion and it recognizes, the extrusion command recognizes that projected profile as a closed loop to then create a new feature. So we can say, right, let's make a new body. Let's make this 20 mil. And then we'll click OK. And then we can go into the bodies or whatever it is. Wait, why can't I select the bodies folder? What's wrong with me? <laughs> there it is. Let's change the properties of this and we'll change its color to black just so it visibly stands out. Wow, that looks hideous. Why does it look like a tar pit? <laughs> it's like a puddle of tar. That looks awful. Never mind, doesn't matter. 
So that's, that profile here, or this body here, is entirely constructed from projected geometry. Therefore, it's linked back to the original feature. If we go back to sketch one again, in fact, we don't even need to edit sketch one. Why am I doing that? We can just go to the parameters and we can see there's that, that value there is the original, uh, the, the length of the arc. We can change this to, let's make it big, let's make it 50. And you can see it updates it in the background immediately. Let's make it visibly huge different. Let's change it to 1,000. And you can see everything updates absolutely everything updates the projected geometry updates along with the original feature so that's kind of the whole point of it uh, there's other there's other benefits of, of using projected geometry like for example if we were to create a brand new sketch on this top profile and we're going to create a let's create a hole right we're going to drill a hole through this top face and we need the hole to be say 20 mil away from the edge here well you can't dimension from the edge unless you project the edge onto this sketch. So what you would do is do project geometry, project that edge, and then you dimension from that projected line to the center of that circle. And then we'll make that 20. Why? Why would you do that? Well, because if this edge, this face moves that way, you want the projected edge to move that way, you want the hole to move with it, because you want the hole to always be 20 mil from that edge. It's building in design intent is what an Autodesk guy would say, hey, I'm building in design intent via this projected geometry in my uh, digital prototyping workflow. <laughs> that's, that's something along the lines of what they would say. Anyway, so that's projecting an edge. Like I said, you can also project faces. Projected geometry, you can project as much as you want. You can just start a sketch and you can just, well, we can't project that, it's a curved face. Can I not project the curved face? No, apparently not. But you can just go and project the whole lot if you want to. It doesn't matter. You don't have to use it. You can create a sketch, project as much geometry as you want, and just not use it. It's fine. You might never project or dimension to this projected edge here. It doesn't matter. Nobody cares. Just leave it alone. When it comes to creating your, your 3D feature, you do your extrusion. Yes, the projected geometry can, it does form a profile that you can extrude from. That doesn't matter. You can just completely ignore it and say, well, I don't care about any of that. All I want to do is project this little circle in here. The rest of it, I'm just going to ignore it. So let's use that to cut a hole through the solid. And that hole is now always 20 mil from that edge. So if we go back to the original extrusion, let's edit that feature. And we'll extrude this by, let's say, 75. That edge is now moved that way. So the hole is still going to be 25 mil from the edge of here. Let's just measure it just to make sure, just so you just, just not make a complete liar of me from the center of there to the edge of there. And then you can see there it is center distance 20 mil from there to that edge. And that will always be the case because you've built in that design intent using projected geometry. Okay, various other things that happen when you when you start a new sketch, for example, let's do a new sketch on why is my 3D mouse not working? It's distracting me. I keep wanting to use it and it's not moving. Uh, but when you sketch on, say, uh, let's say this face here, Inventor gives you this little yellow dot here in the middle of your sketch. That is a projection of the center point of the part. So that's where your X, Y, and Z axes all cross over. Inventor projects the center point as projected geometry on your sketch. You don't have to use it. You might not use it, but it allows you to, to snap to or dimension from or constrain from the center point of the, of the, of the entire model. So it, it could be like a line of symmetry or a point of symmetry. Uh, for a pattern, for example, uh, but you can use that. That is a bit of projected geometry there. Uh, and you might be thinking to yourself, well, actually, this sounds really useful. It sounds really useful. Why doesn't it just project it automatically? Well, it does. It does. I've just turned the setting off to prove a point. So I'm going to go back into File and then Application Options. And then on the Sketch tab, you've got a couple of settings here which control projected geometry. So one of them is Auto Project Edges During Curve Creation. It's really poorly worded, but what it means is I'll sort of translated for you, automatically project edges when you create lines and draw stuff. That's what it means. Automatically project edges whilst you're creating sketch lines. So we'll turn that one on. And then this one here, automatically project edges when you create a sketch or edit a sketch. So we'll turn those two on. Now what happens when you sketch on anything, let's sketch on this face here, Inventor now automatically projects the edges of the face you place your sketch on. That's really important. It's not going to project everything in the background. So let's do another sketch on uh, this top face here. And you can see it's only projected that edge, that edge, that edge, and that edge along with the whole center or the whole outline here. It didn't project these edges here because that is not the same face. It's not the same face as what I placed the sketch on, but it's given us those, those lines automatically projected through. 
some things that well one thing that I sometimes do when I remember on to and it's not important you don't have to do this but it's just one of those things that's kind of nice to kind of get into the habit of doing if you just want to make life a little bit easier is when when inventor does automatically project lines through I usually put a window around everything and then turn it to construction geometry and the reason I do that is exactly for the reason that I mentioned earlier it's to avoid inventor trying to pick up those projected lines as profiles to use for extrusions because most of the time I don't want to use these projected lines for 3D features. I'm, I'm creating these projected lines to reference dimensions to and from or constrain to and from. So I'll turn them to construction lines and that makes sure that when you do an extrusion, there's, you can see here, it's not letting me pick these points or these profiles because they're construction geometry. But making them construction lines doesn't affect their adaptivity back to the original edges. It just stops them from being used by 3D features. So that's something which I do on a regular basis, which is nice to, uh, to, 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 to remember. And then the other setting was automatically project something when I create lines. So not to the effect of that. <laughs> I can't remember how it's worded. Uh, it's not worded in my language, so it's difficult to understand. But what that means is when you draw on lines and stuff, if you hover over an existing edge, Inventor's gonna snap to that edge and it will automatically project it through to allow you to snap to it. So you can see there, it snapped this new line and it automatically projected that edge knowing, hang on a minute, he's hovered over that edge and he's clicked on it, so I'm gonna project it through and then create a constraint between the start of this line and the line that I've just projected through. So it automatically projects lines as and when you snap to them. Same goes for dimensions. So if I want a dimension from this center point to this edge, Inventor goes, hang on a minute, you haven't projected that edge, but you wanted to, you're wanting to dimension to it, so it's going to automatically project it through to allow you to dimension to that edge. And there you go, it's automatically projected it through. Once you finish the sketch and then you use your profile, this projected geometry disappears, well, disappears, it turns itself off. So if I now project this hole here, the sketch turns off, so you can't see the projected geometry anymore, but it's still there. If you go back and edit your sketch, that you use to create that extrusion, the projected geometry is still there, it's just hidden in the background, and then that's absolutely fine. That is absolutely fine. So that's the point of it. That's the point of projected geometry. If I know it's a long video just to explain that one simple point, but if you take nothing away from this video, it's to remember that projected geometry is most importantly an adaptive link to existing features. It allows you to project an entity from an existing feature to then reference for new features and create a link between the two. It's an adaptive link that will move. And then something else you can do as well, as, which is worth, which is just worth pointing out because you might think this, how to break the link between projected geometry. Yes, you can do that. So if we do a sketch, say on, on top of this circle here, that's projected the edge through for the circle because I've got automatically project edges turned on. But what if I don't want there to be a permanent link between this face here uh, or sorry, that edge there, and then the projected sketch. What if I want to break that link? Well, what you can do is right-click on the projected geometry, and then on the right-click menu, you've got Break Link, and that turns it from yellow to green. Yellow edges is projected geometry. Green edges are unconstrained lines, lines that can move, and then bluey, purpley lines are fully constrained lines. And right, that'll do. I think that's probably enough for projected geometry. There's a, there's probably a bit more to it. There's a lot more, there's a lot more examples you can show to demonstrate how it's useful, but I think that should bring the point across. Once you understand what it is, hopefully you can see now that it's almost impossible to, to draw anything without projected geometry. Even, it's not, not just dimensioning to and from, but snapping to is, is really important. You, you just cannot be accurate without projected geometry. Like the example I used with the, uh, you know, extending this profile out from here. There is no way you can draw to the exact slot profile, really, without projecting it through and wasting a lot of your time. You know, drawing pro extra profiles in corners. If you sketch on a face like this and you want to draw exactly to, you know, snap to that bottom corner, you, it doesn't matter how far you zoom in to try and click on a, on a face. You know, you can zoom in as far as you want to try and try and snap to it, but you're never going to do it without projected geometry. You need that geometry projected through to be able to snap to the lines. Think of it as like, again, like AutoCAD, AutoCAD object snaps, they're kind of like that, but you're projecting a line through from a 3D feature, whereas AutoCAD just you know, makes two points touch each other. Anyway, I'm waffling. That'll do for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Toodles!